Matt Bazuki advocates for mental health through the ketogenic diet and shares his experiences on the Bipolar Cast podcast. Please welcome Matt Bazuki. Okay, thanks for asking me to speak, Dave. Um, I'd also like to thank the Silverton for my run in roulette last night. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm working on my skills. Here we go, bipolar keto. This is the story of how I cured my bipolar illness with keto. More accurately, maybe working on my metabolic health in general, but keto was really the, the thing that made the whole recovery possible. Okay, I have a timer, good. This is me in college. Um, I was at Cal at the time, I was 19. Everything was going well, studying computer science, electrical engineering, tough course load, good friends, fraternity. I'm on the left there. And I had some bad habits, unfortunately. So I had a lot of bad habits when I was 19. Uh, a lot of beer and marijuana, a lot of nicotine and the fraternity, as well as carbs. I think I was on low carb, but it was more of a college low carb, which is beer, <laughs> beer and fat, and then a lot of chaos because it was a stressful school curriculum. Okay, so when I was 19, uh, in March, this is the Leviathan from the Bible, the bringer of chaos. I went into a manic episode, and bipolar disorder is characterized by periods of mania with, my mom's filming me there, with a lot of, um, with a lot of energy and very little sleep, and periods of depression with lethargy and all that stuff. I was, um, they took me to the psych ward. I was prescribed an antipsychotic, and I thought this was a t test of my spiritual enlightenment, and that if I took it, I was not enlightened. And so I went, I finally went to the psych ward, and I was psychotic and delusional. I hadn't slept in four or five days. Um, psych ward is a pretty scary place to be when you're in that kind of state. So I was in the psych ward for, I'm trying to, got to speed run this deck a little bit, um, for 10 days that time, or two weeks or something. So from 2016 to 2018, so when I was 19 to 21 years old, I had four involuntary hospitalizations for mania. Each time I was floridly manic, floridly psychotic, delusional. I thought I was Plato uh, reincarnated. I thought I was receiving personal messages from spiritual gurus over YouTube. It was really just like floridly psychotic. Um, I was treated by 41 mental health professionals and I went to eight treatment centers, a bunch of, bunch of residential treatment centers, and I was just super, super sick. This is some of my mom's tracking of my symptoms and you can see that this is just a disaster. I mean, mania, depression, anger, irritability, uh, just all kinds of terrible symptoms and this is a little bit more specific look at some of the stuff my mom was tracking for me for all those years, and you can see the medications, it's just like in, insane. I mean, I practice, this is a heavy duty antipsychotic medication, and I was taking lots of it. Um, this is a recipe for metabolic dysfunction, all of these meds, in case you're wondering. And of course, I really like smoking cigarettes. These are some of my favorite cigarettes. I like the Camel Crush, because you can press the button and then you get the menthol. And I think there's something like people with bipolar, smoking is almost a spiritual experience because there's a lot of like, comorbidity, if you call it, smokers and schizophrenia and bipolar. Um, these are some of the photos that were taken when I was manic. I like these because you can really see the manic aesthetic with the photos, which is kind of the, um, the, the colors and the vibe and all this stuff. Um, so yeah, I was just really, I mean, I was sick. In 2018, I had insight for the first time, and this is when I realized that something with my mood and my health was very, very wrong. And for two years, I had been in and out of such horrible psychoses that I didn't, I wasn't able to put the pieces together. I was never really sane at all. So I, I had some insight and things were still very difficult, but I knew something was really wrong and I had to figure it out, and I was 21 at the time. And so I started tracking everything. 
I started tracking my mood, all the meds I was taking. You can see I was taking benzos five times a day. Uh, they put me on benzos as an anti-manic. Um, my sleep, how much sleep I got for my aura ring, which I still wear, as well as my depression levels, and everything was high and everything was challenging. I was exercising, row 16 there, so I was doing some things well, but life was just very, very difficult. Uh, we tried TMS, which is this protocol where they put this shocky thing next to your head and zap you, and you go like, duh, 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 duh. Um, it was really uncomfortable. We, my dad got a camper, and we, we stayed in the camper next to the, next to the hospital or whatever, because I had to do this all day on and off. I couldn't work, I couldn't go to school. Full-time work was out of the question, off the table. My friends were doing internships and going to school and I was not. I was going to treatment centers all over the country. Parents tried everything. We had the resources to try everything and nothing helped me. This, it's funny, this plethora of psychological therapies that didn't help me at all. Like, I would go to these treatment centers and they would feed me root beer and ice cream and do DBT with me seven groups a day for 50 minutes each group. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's almost like a meme looking back at it. Like, what did you expect was gonna happen? Um, some things are good, so exercise, which I still do, weight training I do, meditation I do, and then, you know, I do things differently now. But it's, I was sick and nothing would work. And then in March, which is now, incidentally, um, in March, the days are becoming longer at a very fast rate. That's the second derivative for those of you who like math. So the days are getting really, really, getting longer, but very fast. And I would go manic every March. I had my first episode in March of 2016. And March was always challenging, and I would have to up my medication dose to 20 milligrams of Zyprexa, which is this antipsychotic medication or more just to stay stable during March, just to prevent myself from sleeping less and less and then going into a manic episode. And I would watch it meticulously every March and I was, it was always nerve wracking. Um, and I was prescribed benzos, Ativan. It took me three years to taper off Ativan. We cross tapered to Valium. We got a compound pharmacy to prescribe 0.1 milligram Valium pills. I was taking it five times a day, tapering off slowly. I had horrific withdrawal. I had irritability. I had rage. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't work. I couldn't do anything. I finally got off them in 2021. Um, this was really unfortunate. This was very, very challenging for me. Okay, so this is the picture in 2020. I was still taking Valium. I had quit drinking and I had quit drugs in June of that year. I quit smoking, I was exercising, I was taking meds as prescribed, I was doing therapy, whatever, all these things they want you to do, and I was sick, and I was very, very sick. And it was going to be a difficult life, so things were going to be very challenging for me. So this is the picture in 2020. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So my mom happened to find Dr. Chris Palmer's work in 2020. Dr. Palmer agreed to treat me pro bono to help out. Denise agreed to help with my nutrition. She's in the back, I think. I saw her. Uh, Charlie Foundation. And on January 4th, I went on a ketogenic diet. I don't remember what the macro makeup was exactly, except that I tracked my ketones and they were high. You can see they were up in the top there, five millimoles, five millimoles, 2.2. I mean, they were really, really high. I actually went into ketoacidosis at one point and got nauseous. And I had to work, I had to adjust, you know, I keto flu a little bit, these things like that. But I really adhered to it for those first, you know, nine months, strictly. And I watched my symptoms go away. I mean, I watched them. It was wild. I, I think my mom and dad and I, we couldn't even believe it. I mean, I could not believe it. You know, I mentioned March Madness. That's a funny joke, by the way. Um, I, 
I went through March on five milligrams, which is 25% when I had to take in previous years, and I had no symptoms. I had no symptoms. It was crazy. I couldn't even believe it. And I was just doing keto, and I was eating a lot of fat, and I was eating protein and swimming and lifting weights and doing this stuff. Um, I got my degree in music. I was making money on Spotify. I started working. I mean, the work I'm doing now as a project manager, I couldn't imagine in tech, like, is impossible. You know, this would have been out of the question when I was sick. I could barely even pick up the phone to make a call to go to the dentist and then follow up because I, my executive functioning just didn't work. I mean, my brain didn't work. Um, I've done this podcast with Ian, who's doing research in Scotland on keto diet for bipolar. We've talked to dozens of people who have reversed their symptoms, their bipolar disorder symptoms, using a ketogenic diet. And then, of course, this is our family foundation. So it's grown to a bunch of employees. Um, it's the intersection of metabolic and mental health. So we're funding clinical trials for ketogenic therapy for mental illness. And things are going really, really well. We're moving the needle very quickly which when you have something like this that works, and everyone has that story of the, you know, their son, or not daughter, nephew, friend, whatever it is, who's had some, something like this, it's pretty common these days. And when you have something like metabolic therapy that works so well for so many people, it's kind of impossible not to, for this not to pick up steam. I was on the Today Show, <laughs> like, you guys can find that segment if you want to, recently, it was pretty funny. So we did a thing with Kate Snow, she talked about keto and mental health, and we filmed it in Florida. I didn't put that in the slides, but so this is like c coming into the mainstream now, metabolic psychiatry. Um, this is the basic protocol. I mean, it's more than keto, obviously. Keto was the thing that, without it, I don't think this would have been possible, but cardiovascular exercise and, and weight training, and then of course I get sunlight in the morning and wear my blue light blockers, which I really like. Um, and I have like the eight sleep. I'm pretty, sleep sleep program is pretty good too. And then medic, medication and connection with people, purpose, all these good things that are good for metabolic health in general. And I try to just kick butt at the main. So this, which is, I mean, probably 95% of the recovery is doing these few basic things very, very well. And so I just try to do these. Oops, I just try to do these very well. Um, I went to Argentina to work remotely for a month last year with my buddy. Um, that's him, second from the left. That's me with this massive beard I had. It was great. We went to the symphony. We did all this stuff. We went to soccer games. I mean, something like this would have been out of the question for me. And I stayed up till 2.30 every night, which is interesting. I had no symptoms. So it's kind of wild. It's almost like... That, this was really eye-opening for me when I realized, wow, it, it seems like I'm cured almost. I, mean, I still watch my sleep, I still track it, I still have the ring, but this was just miraculous. And this is probably when I stopped really worrying or my paranoia lessened. I stopped being paranoid that I was going to have another episode because it, I was just stable throughout this trip. And then... <laughs> um, I can play chess again, which is just great. Um, brain is really, really working well now, and looks like I'm going to finish almost a little early. And my plans for the future is just to, to keep doing what I'm doing, and it almost feels like I've been chucked into this world of metabolic health, because I'm like the kid who got better and then all of this philanthropy happened, but I'm, I'm happy to do it, and it's such a good story, and we have something like this that works so well. I'm happy to give back wherever I can. So thanks for listening, everyone. I appreciate it.